Men are created to be better than women. That's what my grandmother said. It was my mother's birthday and we went out of town. My grandmother flew all the way from Mindanao to celebrate with us. It was the middle of the night when we had this conversation. Men were born to be superior and women are dependent on them, she added. I could not accept it. I stood completely still, in shock, until I finally opened my mouth and shared my thoughts. I don't want to grow up thinking that I'm less capable than who I want to be just because I'm a girl. In the Philippines, contradicting the beliefs of your elders is ill-mannered and disrespectful. And yet, there I was, doing it out loud. I continued on with my monologue, raising a few eyebrows and just silence when I paused. You see, my family is quite patriarchal in nature. And yet, there I was, a self-proclaimed feminist who was very vocal about what I believe is right. I took these experiences to heart and reflected on how women are being viewed in society today. And as shallow as my anecdotes seem to be, and believe me, there are others way worse. They show but a small microcosm of the oppression that women still face. Despite the efforts that are being made, there's still a long way to go for gender equality. Case in point, can you all name influential tech people that you know? Do we hear uh, Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah? Yeah? Elon Musk? Larry Page? Steve Jobs? Okay, great. Y'all know them, right? Because they're influential people in tech. And of course, who wouldn't know them? But why is it that whenever I ask this question, I normally, if not only, hear the names of middle-aged white men? Is this really the reality that we have for the industry? Now, look at these guys. I'm sorry, I don't exactly know who they are, but I just looked up computer scientists on the internet. And these are the images that showed up. And quite frankly, they look very different from how I, and almost everyone, if not already everyone else in this room looks like. Is this really the reality that we have for the field of tech? Then why does a young Filipina girl stand in front of you right now to tell her journey and story in tech? Does this make me unqualified for the position? Back in high school, yes, this high school, this I guess, um, I was part of the computer science training pool for different competitions. And we were only around five girls in a group of over 20. And although everyone was very nice, very accommodating, I still couldn't help but you know, be a lot less feminine than how I really am, just so I could feel up to par with everyone else in the room. Because honestly, being a girl was a clear minority. And fast forward to my senior years, and when it comes to my research group, I was grouped with two amazing boys who I love very much. I'm very supportive, very dear. Shout out to Kyle and Ardy. But unfortunately for me, again, despite my efforts for actual project progression, I couldn't escape hearing comments saying that it was only them doing the programming, or that I was just there to make the presentations look pretty, you know, make the documentation work, paperwork, or mere moral support. When the idea of holding, like, coming up with a tech project to begin with, and the user interface was my doing. In all honesty, so many people have doubted, if not disregarded, the footing that I've set for myself as a tech enthusiast. Even in my own family, they weren't exactly as excited when I said that I wanted to take a career in engineering. In fact, they would try to convince me to consider other career choices because to them, you know, engineering in any technical field to begin with is such a boys' club. It's a big old scary boys' club. And there's not a lot of money to meet a girl. But I guess I was just stubborn enough to want to stay. But the clear reality that women are still being questioned, if not doubted, for their interest to enter any particular tech field still remains. Now, let's bring in the numbers. Because in a study by Ativa IT, they show that 27, only 27% of students actually consider entering a career in tech. Was there 61% of male students who did? And to give it more context, among this 27%, only 3% said that tech was their first choice. 
For the rest, it was just merely a fleeting option, a passing what if. And as an engineering student myself, it's quite baffling to see that engineering graduates in the world, only 20% are women. And it, when, when it comes to the actual practicing field, among all the working engineering in the entire world, women make up only 11%. Because apparently, 40% of women who actually do earn their engineering degrees, who went through undergrad, who got their degrees, who got their licenses, quit, or never enter the field to begin with. Now, let's bring this a little bit closer to home. Because in the Philippines, despite having the narrowest gender gap in Asia, yes, that is a fact, men still account for most of the professionals when it comes to science technology in undergraduate education. Because according to the Commission on Higher Education in the academic year 2016 to 2017, students enrolled in science and tech courses, only 29.3% are women, with the remaining 70.7%, which are men. And this kind of shows how much of a hurdle that women have to go through and all the struggles that they have, because these numbers show that they're not as welcome because of different prejudices and stereotypes. And just a side story, when I had a talk with professional women in the IT industry and some professors as well in the academia, our open forum was honestly a support system. These women were voicing out their frustrations when it comes to tech, about how they have to make their voice sound louder or lower, or red, wear a specific shade of red lipstick. Girls, you know what red lipstick that is. Or not wear anything that's pink or floral just so the men in their office and in their schools would actually listen. And they also opened up about how within their offices and, and, and schools that women in tech are commonly being sexually harassed. And because a study by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine showed that 58% of women in the academic and research fields experience a form of sexual harassment. And just let me contextualize that this 58% are just the cases that have been reported. Because a lot of the women who experience these types of sexual harassment don't even open up to begin with. And this shows how unsafe and unfair the environment is. And you can see, it's so different when you read these stories online to when you actually hear it from the women themselves and how they're actively looking for a community to be able to reassure them and validate them that they're not alone in their struggles and that they do belong in tech. Because unfortunately, the way that media portrays it to be and the way that society imposes the world of tech and any tech field regardless is not the reality that they want to set for themselves. And don't even get me started on the gender wage gap, which shows that women in tech are paid a whopping 18 to 22 percent less than that of their male counterparts. And really, it just shows how unfair it is for women to be able to thrive in what is supposed to be known to be as a traditionally male-dominated culture. And this makes sense because when I ask young girls or anyone at all who they know when it comes to tech. And I don't really hear any females an answer. Even when I ask them, particularly if they know any female working in tech. And this slide just shows us a very small fraction of all the women whose contributions remain unpopularized, unheard to the rest of the community. Maybe you can point out one or two names, but this is just a very small fraction of all their contributions and all the names of the women who are being not presented to the rest of the community. And it's actually the stats, because according to PWCK, they found out that 78% of students can't name a famous woman in tech. And that's a problem that I like to contextualize whenever I can, to make us realize how much of a pressing problem this actually is. Remember my mini Q&A portion at the start of this talk. Can you even name any of the women that I have pointed out today? See, and it makes sense because when you ask young girls about what they want to be when they grow up, you don't hear a lot of them say that they want to be robotics engineers or computer scientists, inventors. But apparently, it's so normal to hear this type of answer from young boys. And heck, my very first career choice was to be a prima ballerina. 
because I believe then that it was the perfect job for girls, which is not at all wrong. And I love ballet, I love ballerinas, mad respect to that type of talent. But the problem here is that not, not that young girls are into ballet or that boys are into robotics, but the mere idea that it feels so wrong to assume vice versa. Or that it feels so unorthodox to even want both. When in fact it's actually a two-way street when my ballet teachers then were actually boys or actually men, but the boys my age found it absolutely horrifying to envision themselves in heights and ballet flats. And this type of mindset, you know, being able to stereotype a certain career to a gender is something that is ingrained in our minds as children and is there for the long term. And this is all the change we have to be able to create a society that embraces women in tech and that we have to equate young boys and young girls with the idea that tech is for everyone. And just as I know here, unfortunately, I can no longer do ballet. I kind of play around with aerial arts. Are you guys familiar with aerial hoop, aerial self, and all that stuff? And to me, being able to do that, you know, I still like to play around with coding, learn a new language, um, be able to make my own games or animations. And to me, being able to perform and dance is just as fun as learning more about optimization algorithms. And it honestly makes my world all the more exciting, right? And throughout being able to throughout my journey of discovering myself and learning and appreciating tech more and more, I found myself in me It was about three years ago, I was at a hackathon and I met my friend Audrey who wanted to interview me for her blog then because I used to compete for international research competitions for uh, my research and programming. And what started off as you know, our, on, in a formal Q&A session ended up to be a rant about how we see that there's so very few female role models that are present, even and most especially in the Philippines. And then the idea of holding the very first Women in Tech conference by students and for students was brought up. And the rest was history. And now we type us over 70 plus members all around the world. I mean, who knew I'd actually have the honor to be able to incorporate an organization, a nonprofit organization, before I even graduate college? And through that, I've had the honor and privilege to be able to travel and teach young kids the wonders of them, from letting them play with pseudo coding softwares to make their own games and animations, to teaching them the wonders of STEM education as well. These kids were all years and very eager to learn more. And in addition to this, I've had the pleasure of being able to meet such women, amazing women in tech bosses. And from fintech CEOs, some um, biotech professors, CS professors, data scientists, astronauts, physicists. This type of exposure motivated me and the rest of the team to make these women's, women's names heard and for their contributions to be shared to the rest of the community so that young girls finally have someone to look up to. And that they should learn that they have every right to aspire for the future that these women in tech bosses have shown us. And I guess being part of this org, we can't help but wonder or think of how we can make such large-scale mastercraft in ways to make an even more lasting impact when it comes to tech. I mean, we've held some different women in tech conferences, women in tech talks, outreaches, blog post chapters, etc. But is this really enough? And then that's when it hit me. We were already on our way, like to some extent. Because I realized that the best type of change you can make in order to make a society that embraces women in tech is to start with the next generation. And then I remembered what my grandmother said. And I realized it had so much to do with how she grew up and what she was taught to believe. Almost their entire generation was brought up thinking that men were created to be better than women. And I realized that I shouldn't have been mad at her but what society was telling her. She lived in a time where millions of girls' dreams were shattered because they grew up that their own gender, they believed that their own gender was stopping them from being the world's most successful engineers, astronauts, inventors, researchers, scientists, because their own mothers raised them to believe so. And these mothers probably also grew up thinking and having that same mindset, having that same heartache. But 
but now we're here in this day, in this age. And that time, we were raising young girls with glass ceilings put above their heads with no room to grow beyond. But now we have the power to change that. We have the power to foster and grow a new generation of dreamers, believers, and doers. And this fight is a degrowth for an even larger fight for all genders to reach the love and respect and appreciation they have for tech and any field regardless of how they identify us. Because no matter how infinitesimal we may seem to be, in the grand scheme of the universe, each and every act we make ripples into a future that we choose to mold. And this is how we change our society by not only empowering our community, but by empowering an entire generation and all generations to come to break glass ceilings and to learn that it's completely okay to love both ballet and robotics at the same time. Thank you.